So traveling with dogs is great. So we've met up with a couple of expats that are nomads traveling with the dogs here in Saranda, Albania. And Julie's actually known them for, I guess, a couple years through uh, dialogue as we've done our travels with pets. And she's been preparing to have her own travel with their dogs around the world. So we're gonna meet up with Emily and Chris today and they're gonna talk about their travels, their expenses and their pets. And um, it should be fun. So let's go. Let's go. All right, come on in guys. Hey. Hi. Hey Chris. Hi. Hey Emily. Hi. Hey, thanks for letting us uh, come in and invade your home. Of course. Yeah, of course. And, and actually, I guess it's your Airbnb, your yes. temporary home as you're yes. traveling with the dogs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an Airbnb in Saranda, Albania, and it is uh, with your pets uh, allowed. What What is your rate here? Uh, yeah, so we have a 28-day stay, which gave us the month-long discount, and that made it $570 for basically the month. So $570, and this is the month of March in Saranda, Albania. Off-season. Yes, sure. a little bit off-season, yes. Okay, let's take a look and see where you guys are living. So I can tell over here to the left of the door, you've got uh, a good-sized bathroom and a good-sized shower. And you happy with your Airbnb? It's Yeah, it's good. It's not you know amazing. It doesn't have the sea view that some of them have, but... It does have a little dishwasher. Oh, yeah. fantastic. And, and, um, and a di oh, and that's a, nice. <laughs> and a washing machine, too. So and a washing it's, machine. It's, it's very functional. You hear? And so it's got a good-sized living room. And it's got a uh, big TV over here. A couple of them, yeah. yeah a couple. One, one, one in the, the bedroom, bedroom, too, huh? And you've got a balcony. So yep. this is good for the dogs. Yeah. Yeah, nice. we have an older dog, and so that's a place where he can go to the bathroom. And this is the 15 year old, huh? Yeah, this is Sammy. Hi, Sam. He's hanging out on the bed. <laughs> so he's 15 years old, so they didn't let the uh, senior citizen dog stop hit them from starting their travels. Similar to Julie and I, we started with our 15 year old Chihuahua. For those of you that haven't been around uh, through the entire time with us, and we uh, had a wonderful time with. Uh, her until the end and that's when we ended up adopting our beautiful Arya. Um, so you have uh, some stuff here that you travel with with the pups, Emily? Yeah, so um, we this is my suitcase and then this is the dog suitcase oh, okay. and Did this is Chris's suitcase so you can see that the dogs the have dogs... a bigger suitcase than Chris. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but there's two of them so maybe the... we have to go on planes and trains and buses and, and ferries. And ferries, and so it's all got to fit together pretty uh, efficiently. So Sam's going to look the his, Sam, most, his that's, most awkward. That's his most <laughs> beautiful look. <laughs> okay. but so, so, you, so, so I I saw you uh, wearing this out on the hike recently with yeah. us, so I'll overlay some footage right here yeah. where you were bringing Denver around. Yeah. Um, yeah, so very, very nice. Oh, this little strap was something that I hadn't thought about before we left home. And it's actually incredibly useful because it just slides right over the suitcase handle. And so when we're going around the air, airport or whatever, we don't necessarily have extra hands or extra, um, you know, Chris has this on his back and we're wheeling two suitcases. So having this, the dogs being able to go on the back of the suitcase or on the top of the suitcase is a really big Deal. Yes. He's, he's usually zipped in and not flopping all over the place like he is right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to go inside, buddy? Yeah. And what was your website? It's uh, petsaroundtheworld.org. Okay, so this is pretty cool being out with uh, dog parents that are traveling and, and the nomad life, just like Julie and I. And uh, surprisingly, there's so many dog parents here <laughs> and, and the uh, that are traveling with with uh, dogs and they, are, are you kind of surprised to see how many people are out there on the road with this yeah in albania yeah, especially. Albania. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes it's pretty awesome but you know thank you for letting us come into your your home and to share your story um you guys have been um kind of recently launched uh you've been traveling for how long now yeah. we left california for europe in january okay. and we went on a road trip around the u.s for about five months before you before we left for Europe mm -hmm. so um, I guess in total about seven months but then uh, previously in our previous life 
<laughs> we spent a year in backpacking through South America. Seems like everybody wants to get some Ecuador time. So you did eight, <laughs> eight months in Ecuador, mm -hmm. five months backpacking around yeah. um, the United States before hitting Europe in January. Road tripping in Road, the road tripping. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so we've done it. We've done it all. Like the the early days, we did backpacking, and then recently we did a road trip. And now we don't have a car, yeah. and we are in Europe. Um, and that's part of the part of the journey is to see if we can how much we can do without a car, trotting these two around. Uh, yeah. So that's interesting because if you follow Julie and I, we do a car. We have a car that we have registered in our Bulgarian corporation, and you can go through our website or look at our videos about how to have a car as a person with no residency in, in the uh, continent of Europe and be able to drive around Europe. But doing the public transportation thing um, <laughs> is, is going to be a lot more yeah. challenging. Yeah. So so it, it might be interesting. You do a vlog or not a vlog, a blog, right? Mm -hmm. on your on your website. So I'm assuming you're going to be giving the details of your trials and tribulations of jumping on trains, buses, and how you're toting these two around. Yeah, we started with a post around how to get the dogs from California or U.S., anywhere in the U.S., to Europe. Um, and the other dog, even though he looks small, he's actually over the 8 kg limit, which is often what's the upper limit of flying in a cabin. So he flew in excess baggage in the hard shell crate. Mm -hmm. um, and then he flew inside the cabin. So the, the post kind of goes through all of that. And then from there, we're gonna kind of keep updating and talking about a little bit more about how to, <laughs> especially, <laughs> how to get around Europe. Especially yeah. in the Balkans. That is probably the toughest part of Europe to get around without, with, without, without a car yes. or with, with pets. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you have no pets, getting around the Balkans isn't that hard. Super simple. <laughs> it's, when, when you put the pets into the equation. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so are you, um, oh. let, let, before we get too far in front of ourselves. I'll um, just show the camera. Uh, because our dogs are little, they fit in bags, so they don't need it that much. But um, one of the key things that you do need in Europe, if you are taking dogs on public transportation, is the muzzle. Um, you know, I guess while we're talking about weird products, when we go to uh, the UK later uh, in, in the year, yes. we're going to need a strap for the dogs in the car so that they are restrained. are restrained. We normally just let our dogs, you know, make them comfortable beds in there so that they can sit in the back seat or up in the window ledge. But we're going to need to have a, a strap so our dogs will be wondering why we're uh, Thank torturing goodness them. Thank we do have them. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> And that's, that's really one of the reasons why we have the website is for uh, getting used to situations like that. Our dogs um, have learned from very early on to travel with the harness on. They travel in restraints. Um, you had met with uh, Julie, I guess, through online communication mm -hmm. prior to um, us meeting you in person. Uh, when you're doing some, uh, when you were doing working on your website, but uh, you know, getting some input on our experiences on traveling with the pets, and that's how we ended up connecting is uh, you two collaborating on, on sharing some yeah. information. So, uh, so it's uh, so there, it's been a couple of years, I think, that you guys have known each other. We just finally just got to meet them. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we met you on YouTube, yes, oh, watching the YouTube videos, mm -hmm. and then. Um, because they're accessible through things like the Facebook page, then Julie and I started chatting. Yep, you can reach me by messenger. <laughs> <laughs> and she's very helpful. Yes. Yeah. So uh, how long have you guys been trying to form this plan to, to take off with the, with the dogs and, or to start off as, or to travel as nomads, whether it was with or without dogs and what happened? I think it was always with dogs because we have them. Mm -hmm. um, if, I don't know if I didn't have a dog to begin with, I don't know that I would go get some <laughs> to travel with they them. They are really good companions, but uh, yeah, it definitely uh, complicates things. Yeah. yeah, probably two years ago, we had thought about uh, doing the D7 visa in Portugal. Uh, it's a, it has been a pretty popular route, so we went to Portugal for about a month to kind of check it out. What did we think? And we liked Portugal a lot, but what we did realize while we were there was, actually, we don't want to settle in one place right now. We really wanted to travel, and the big hurdle, of course, was yeah, but traveling is really different from moving. And we've got these two dogs and one of them's, you know, he's a senior. So it was like, well, I gotta figure this out. And um, so I made this long list of all these places I wanted to go. And some of them, you know, like Thailand or whatever, 
pretty quickly as I was doing my research got crossed off because it's just, you can go there, but it's not easy. And other places like Europe, well, we'd already been to South America, so we knew we could do that and without too much difficulty, but we hadn't spent a ton of time, especially in um, kind of Italy or in the Balkans areas. So we thought, oh, you know what? Let's, let's make that our first stop. And I would heard Italy is one of the most dog friendly countries in the world. So let's start there. So that's what we did. Well, it's also one of the inspirations for petsaroundtheworld.org, which is our website, um, was that you were running into mm -hmm. gaps in information all over the place. And, uh, and so you had to go to forums. And it just it's very difficult to get really good information about going outside the U.S. with a dog um, for yes. people who are inside the U.S. So, um, but um, so for I think some of it was well we already we already know we want to travel right mm -hmm. um, and so um, but for me um, I've been at my job for twenty years and so that's a really long time and so part of it is just to get a clean look at things um, we had. You know we have a, a decent amount set away for retirement and stuff like that and so we have do have a cushion to work with um but then the trick was well that's got to stay where it's got to stay and yeah if people are uh, familiar with the fire movement i yeah. think our label mm -hmm. is coast fire yeah yeah so so we wanted a coast um but that means we needed some passive income stuff like that and and so mostly it was uh how do we get a break and then looking at it the U.S. being like it's way too expensive, um, and then so uh, that that's when we started exploring to see which countries made the most sense. How do you deal with dogs? Uh, all those things. Yeah. So oh. so fire real quickly is financial independence retire, retire early, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those of you not familiar with the fire term, and uh, I, I think Julie and I we we. Did the fire thing without knowing that yeah. there was a term for it. <laughs> so <laughs> long we, time ago. Yes. Um, and a big part of our the way we're making the financial part of things work right now. So uh, I think one of the things people like to know is, well, how much are you spending? You know, is this some crazy? You can see this is a nice apartment, but it's not fancy or anything. But you know, kind of what's the spending goal? So we're trying to stick to right around three thousand a month, um, but not necessarily per month. Hopefully, Albania is cheaper than. Um, you know, some especially in the summer, Albania in March should be way cheaper than Montenegro, for example, in June. Sure. Um, and then, so yeah, so three thousand kind of when you divide it up or for the whole year, and then uh, probably another ten thousand for things um, like health insurance, plane tickets, just things an emergency fund stuff like that. That's a, that's a great point. She just brought up an emergency fund. We've been trying to put that out there also because. An emergency fund is actually something everyone should have if they are going to take the plunge. They need minimally, in my opinion, 2000 Yeah. And regarding health insurance, um, for those of you that are new here, I'm a licensed agent in the States. And um, you know, if you're looking for international medical, Julie and I, we have $1 million of coverage on us. We have a $2,500 deductible. And uh, we're coming out with about $250 a month. Two and so if you want information on the international medical insurance that uh, Julie and I have, or looking for something for yourselves, uh, go ahead and go to warrenjulietravel.com and look for the international medical page and you can run some quotes for yourselves there. But also if you have questions or wanna have uh, get the information from me, you can email me at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com if you're looking for uh, international health insurance. Um, and so it might not be as expensive as what you might think, but it is age related. So as you get older, you can expect that your premiums will be going up as well. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned kind of part of that extra 10,000 or so plane tickets. We do the uh, credit card points. So our flights aren't that expensive, but you do have to pay for the dogs. Um, so like the in-cabin fee is about $200. <laughs> uh -huh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the the in, the um, excess baggage fee is about mm, depends on the airline, but somewhere between about three and five hundred dollars. Um, and one of the things I wanted to mention is a lot of people call the dog flying in the under the plane uh, cargo, but cargo is actually a service that some airlines have and some don't, and it's usually based on route and weight. 
and um, it's separate from you. And yeah, you, they can actually fly on a separate flight from you, things like that. And that, so like Sam flying from California to Rome was four hundred dollars, but if he had done the same thing through cargo, it might have been fifteen hundred dollars. That's <laughs> interesting. So I did want to really point that out because a lot of times people will specifically use the word cargo and search for cargo and end up going, oh my gosh, this is so expensive, I can't believe it. But they don't realize there's actually another word, which is excess baggage. That's a great point you made. Thanks for that. You, you can trust Julie on this stuff more than me, but uh, we do have authorities here that have been spending a lot of time focused on the dog travel stuff. And I think it's interesting that there's they're being creative in some of the things they're doing because traveling around the Balkans with pets is not easy without a car. So they are using ferries. They actually used a ferry from Italy into Albania. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we did do a ferry video of our own. So if you're interested to know what it's like to travel with a dog or just even take the ferry with a car, it's, it's, uh, it's there. But that would be similar to the experience you had mm -hmm. on your ferry. And, you know, yeah, we watched your video before we went, and so yeah. it sort of helped us feel comfortable of like we knew what we were getting into. <laughs> and different, yeah. And yeah, at some point we're like trotting with the bags, I think, that we showed earlier, all the way across this, uh, from the ter ferry, ferry terminal, all the way to the ferry was all the way across the whole, uh, it was a good like, I don't know, 1K walk or something like that. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so if you're traveling with dogs, getting your luggage to as minimal as possible yes. is a really good idea. If you're doing our style. It, yeah, yeah, if you yeah, don't have yeah. a car. Because that was a bit of a, yeah, that was a bit of an experience. <laughs> so so I, I think, you know, for people following Julie and I, seeing how we do things with our dogs, doing it with a car, and understanding that way of traveling is one thing, and I think it's helped a lot of people, but if you've been thinking you don't want to do the car, and you want to have an idea of how life might be with uh, without a vehicle at your disposal and doing this to these types of routes you probably want to jump on their blog and you know see what what they're posting see if emily is pulling her hair out yet <laughs> <laughs> so so guys um your budget seems pretty reasonable and just when when we look at uh retirees for example um in the united states that are a couple twenty nine hundred dollars is basically how much a retired couple in the u.s gets per month. So you're budgeting a little bit over a typical uh, on Social Security. So mm -hmm. people that are out there retired, if they're looking at doing this, it's not something that you don't believe is a crazy uh, thing to do, even with dogs, where we, we spoke with retirees that are on these budgets, but they're doing stuff without pets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at, really the dogs add a big chunk of our monthly expenses. Um, you know, even like we got them the pet passport in Italy and it wasn't that expensive in Italy. It was 50 euros, I think. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't very expensive. Um, and getting them the certificate from California to Europe was $400. So these guys are costing us way more. Than <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the love we get, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so you and Julie were communicating about this. We, we have ours from Bulgaria for our dogs and then you guys got these recently. And um, we don't have residency in Bulgaria. You don't have residency in Italy. Mm. You don't need to have residency in a, an EU country to get the EU pet passport. Um, you just need to have some up-to-date records and a vet that understands that he can do it. There's a lot of vets right. that will think, oh, I can't do this. You don't have residency. You're not a citizen. And that's not part of the rules. So once you get one of these things, it makes it getting your, your dog in and out of countries all over Europe, whether they're EU or not, very, very easy. You just need to make sure you keep it up to date and get your updated um, shots as necessary. Mm -hmm. And they get recorded in here with the vets in the different countries that you're in to make sure that um, you're good to go when you come back into the Schengen. Or even if you're going from Montenegro to Serbia or from or into Turkey, you show this, you're, you're golden. Mm -hmm. And the country that seems to be the easiest to get one, if you're thinking, I could go anywhere to start with, and you want to start with somewhere that's easy to get a pet passport, Spain. Yeah, we almost, uh, it was touch and go with ours, because uh, they were not sh they were not sure this was the first time they had done them with the vet that we went to. Um, and luckily, or an American who didn't have a residency. Right, for, mm -hmm. for non-resident. Um, 
Uh, but then they realized that they could do it. Um, you, you showed them our video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. Oh. Uh, you were talking to somebody else up in northern Italy that she was running into problems. Uh, like their vet just refused to do it. So it really depends on the vet or go to Spain or watch the Watch Spain. their video. <laughs> Spain is definitely mm -hmm. the easiest country to come into, fly into, get the mm -hmm. EU pet passport, and move on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Make your, um, you know, if you can contact your vet before you land and know where you're going, that might be helpful. You can do some reach out before you're in country. Mm -hmm. okay. You can. You started this journey from California, and so you sold your home, or what's going on there? No, um, we actually, we bought a house in 2010, so We're kind lucky. of lucky timing. Yep. Great. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in San Jose. In San Jose, yeah, in the Bay so, Area, so, yes. you know. Um, Not easy. So, yeah. a high cost of living area, which is part of the reason that we can't be coast fire in California. Um, but by renting out our house, we put a, like an ADU in the backyard too, so we can rent out kind of like a granny flat, and then we can rent out the front unit, and uh, we rent them not only uh, not exclusively but kind of midterm like to uh, traveling nurses that sort of thing so it's a furnished rental and um, try and get people for about one to three months and that seems to be a good um, way to manage it even from afar is things like that yeah. um but yeah so the money that the income that we're getting from um renting our house out in san jose is part of a huge part of what pays for that three thousand dollars a month a really good resource to mention yeah. because if you're thinking of traveling I know some people might come to Europe for a part of the year and then they want to travel in the US for part of the year Furnished Finder I have found so when we did our road trip in the US um, this exact same place on Airbnb was maybe let's say 3500 for the month and um, we found the same place on Furnished Finder for 2500 in Florida well guys thank you for joining us, sharing your stories, and please don't forget to follow their adventures on their blog, and don't forget yep. to follow Julie and I. If this is your first video, please give this video a like, subscribe, share with other people you think might benefit from this uh, video. Don't forget to leave comments down below, and as a reminder, Julie and I, we're traveling the world with our two dogs, and we're trying to see what it's like to live in different countries, different places, and we're trying to share our experiences and expenses with you, so we hope that uh, you'll be joining us. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao. See ya.